Hello, everybody, indeed. My name is Sterling Lee, and welcome to another episode of Durham Unplugged. Today, um, or I, last episode, I brought to you uh, Tito Dante Marampetri, the man who says he's on my left at regional council. Today, I bring to you uh, the man who sits on my right, seats, sits on my right. We have Christopher Chris Leahy from Whitby. Chris, how are you doing today, bud? Doing really well. How about you, Sterling? Well, not as good as you. I'm not in a tropical background right now. <laughs> With the waves and the palm trees, I am clearly in my home office. What do you got back there? <laughs> um, yeah, so no, it's just one of the great things about Zooms, you can pick your virtual background. So sometimes I'm in space, sometimes uh, I'm in the tropics, but uh, it just helps hide the, uh, the many children and all the stuff that's going on in the background sometimes. So if a child pops their head in here, I, uh, they're going to say hi at some point, I'm sure. And I hope, I hope we, get, I hope we get these guest visitors today. Now, um, Chris, <laughs> I think on Facebook you have three children? Yeah, 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 yeah. And how old are they? They're, um, uh, how are they, all the cases? One just had a birth. No, two just had a birthday. Like this is the problem in the spring. So it goes Ada, May, uh, Ada, Thomas, and Maeve. Uh, Ada is thirteen. She's just finishing up grade eight. Sadly, no graduation, grad trip. That's you know with the nonsense of everything oh, right. going on that we have to stay safe, which is unfortunate. Uh, my son, who uh, just turned uh, twelve, so that was actually last week. So yeah, so he's Happy 12 birthday. and he's in six. Yeah, and then my my daughter who turned nine two weeks ago. So they're they're six days apart, and same birthday as my dad, and uh, and our, our former MP uh, Judy Longfield, which is hilarious. And um, so yeah, so there's nine, and she's in grade three. So yeah, oh, fantastic. It's uh, enjoying the entire uh, schooling from home experience, just like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> please put enjoying in quotation marks, please. <laughs> oh, there's a <laughs> There has to be. Now, um, your wife uh, is, is, is a medical uh, doctor or something, correct? Yeah, yeah. No, um, she's a physician. She's a partner in the Oshawa Clinic Group. They have uh, four buildings, 110 physicians. They're the largest private uh, clinic of physicians in the whole country. Right. And um, so, yeah, she's very much involved there. She's been there since uh, basically since we moved back to Whitby about 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and she's also the uh, chair of the OMA rep for Durham and Corthus. So she's very much involved for the last four or five years in uh, OMA politics and gets the political side there. So I influenced her a little bit to get on the political side. Um, we'll see, this could be the end of her run. Right. <laughs> I, guess I think five or six years is her limit. But um, but yeah, she's been really involved. There's been, uh, it's been crazy what's going on well, I was going to say, there's so, much, there's, there's so much to unpack right now. So right off yeah. the bat, uh, my, 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 my first point of question is that, so generally she's been working, you know, representing the front lines, you know, doing the, the, the crappy work, uh, and you've been with the kids. Yeah, yeah. How's and that been? <laughs> well, it's, it's, this is the, the nice thing about on, uh, you know, being a politician and regional council and stuff like that is that, uh, you know, when we're not in meetings and we're not visiting residents, that we have time, like, uh, to see with the kids. So generally I, I try and see the kids as much as I can. I'm, now right. that I don't work as much every day in the, in the city, um, home, for, you know, home for dinner, most, most of the nights, except when we have events. And, uh, so yeah, so that's been different, but it has been a little bit of a shift when we started with the, uh, the homeschooling piece. It, you know, it was a struggle to get all the information from the schools. Like how old, how old is my kid's children. two and a half. Yeah. And so, so I, I, I don't, I don't have these struggles. I have my own struggles of like potty training, <laughs> but I only have one. Right. So like my wife and I can play, like we can, we can double team the kid and we're fine. Whereas you, you're yeah. playing zone, right? You have to play zone against three kids. Yeah. It, it, it's a little different. And Hey, I got a great potty training book. If you need a quick read, it worked great on all three kids. I would have needed this three weeks ago. I should have done oh, this, three you're weeks done? Ago. this you're is done? my bad. But I, for the most oh. part, he's 90% there. Oh, well then you're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that was quite the experience going through that three times as well. Um, and the differences in boys and girls and all that good stuff. Yeah, but yeah no, it's different because, and, and the teachers have been great. I know they're working really hard because they're, you know, they're teachers. We're not teachers and we're trying to uh, close that gap. But, right. you know, even in the first week, just trying to understand all the technological platforms. Like I had coming in on three different platforms. I had stuff coming in on Edsby. I had stuff coming on Teams. I had stuff coming in on OneNote. And then how do I get the kids to think, uh, get their information back? And what's the technical requirements? <laughs> like it's, it, was, it, it was a lot of learning curve for the kids and for us to stay on top of what they're learning. And then just creating so a they schedule. Didn't, like, they didn't standardize it. 
amongst all the schools or it's well it was each board and then there is a the, each board sent out like a standardized approach but i think the, te uh, the teachers also have the opportunity to customize it which in the ways they think best right because uh some of the teachers um like my daughter's teachers in grade eight so she's engaging with more teachers uh being in grade eight so you know some of them already have a question and they do uh they do a zoom call so they need to be able to have that set up and other ones will have just a word doc uh loaded in their platform and they fill out the information and send it back and other ones will do one note so it's no thing is complex it's, it's just, just a lot of different ones it's a lot and staying absorbed and it's um on those different pieces and and thankfully my wife's been uh really on top of all the school parts so when she's been back she's been really on top of all the different pieces now he's captured the documents takes the images because they have different qr codes so i'm like the one kid has a qr code so click the qr code drop all the files load it in that's for grade three um you know grade six okay store all the files and images in the one note for the topic in the class what? and then uh and then my daughter in grade eight is actually been able to capture and do all their stuff through edsby and and, and sometimes emails the teachers all the work that she's done and we help take pictures of it things like that so it's because there you know there are multiple teachers multiple different pieces it's yeah i'm, I'm a, a lot to it guy. and just what you described is giving me anxiety just thinking about <laughs> I, I think we're going to stay one and done with our kid just to keep it easier. We can just oh, come focus on. on no, I know yeah. we get that a lot from our respective parents, but um, um, kids are expensive, which I think you can ah. speak to having three of them. And, yeah. um, you know, I always say why imp we, you can't improve on perfection. And I feel like, Oh, uh, with, there with you Finn, go. He's like just perfect. And I, I honestly believe oh, that he's go. been a great kid. So oh, we'll course. just, we're, we're good with that. Um, now oh, you mentioned, no, 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 no. how long have you been married to your wife for? Um, uh, be, it, we had our 16th year anniversary and it'll be no it's 16 in june i'm not trying to trap you chris i'm not trying to trap <laughs> it sounds like you are <laughs> <laughs> you're like that, this interview is over wait a sec june 12th so 2004. 15 years good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's amazing um yeah so yeah 15 years ago it'd been 2004 um how did you guys meet um we met on the web actually okay um, which, which site in, did you use in 2000 um it was called web personals and then it turned to lava life okay so Essentially, oh, we used the harmony back in the day. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, my my good friends I've met on Heen Harmony. Actually, a lot of our friends have met online. But when we met back, it would be twenty years ago, right. this November, because it was uh, it was I went to my buddy's remember uh, Remembrance Day wedding, November eleventh, twenty two thousand, and I saw you remember, and I met yeah. her the next day on my way back driving through uh, through Waterloo. But um, oh, is she from Waterloo? Yeah, yeah, we met online. And, no, she's from Ottawa. Okay. But, you were driving um, but she was going to school in Waterloo. Laurier or Yeah, Waterloo? no, I was driving back from Windsor. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, okay, I'll go back to the there's there are a lot of moving parts there's, there's of this like, one. So I, uh, it involves story. <laughs> so I went to I did my undergrad at Laurier right. in political science and economics. Go, I did my Hawks. MBA at Mc Oh hey, Golden Hawks, that's right. Is that where you went? Yeah, I went to Laurier as well. Oh, that's right. You told me that i forgot yeah. um you know a fellow hawk you were hawk. you were too popular for me obviously <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was probably way a lot a lot before you a couple years before you went the um so yeah so i went to laurier and uh, it's funny for i guess four years uh three or four years we were both in waterloo in the city together but we never met um then i was doing my uh, mba at mcmaster and i was on a work term uh for nortel Cool. out in, in Brampton and then my buddy my my good friend from when I was a kid he was getting married in Windsor and uh, we had just met online and I was driving through Waterloo and we met downtown at uh, the Plantation Cafe and uh, the rest is history I suppose. I still maintain the best wings in the country is Morty's Pub. Did you ever go to Morty's? Yeah Morty's is great yeah, actually nice. I live really close to Morty's. Oh we didn't live far off then because I lived right behind yeah. Uh, I live down the street a bit behind uh, Phil's, which you obviously. Oh, okay. Know. Phil's grandson's place. What? Really? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, that uh, was the full name. <laughs> yeah. So anyone who doesn't know, we're going really deep right now. So Wings, is just, really a, deep. <laughs> Wings is just a pub in Waterloo and uh, they would have like cheap wing night. And the thing is each wing yes. was the size of like a KFC drumstick. They weren't they didn't mess around those wings and they were dead. Yeah, they were. And they were phenomenal. They were so like cheap. I loved their wings. And then Phil oh, no. is, um, we'll call it a dive bar, but it was like a dive oh. bar slash club. It's not even dive. 100%. It was just like a building. 
that they got a liquor permit for, and it's where everyone got like really cheap drinks. Like if I'm not mistaken, oh yeah, well, it was a buck. It was a buck twenty five. Then right. it was a buck fifty. And I think it went up to one seventy five by the time I graduated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you throw in a quarter for like a tip, and then pretty soon, like yeah, like per drink was like two dollars a drink. Like that is not a sustainable business model, but it always smelled like uh, vomit and um, cat litter is how I described the smell there. <laughs> so you didn't, you didn't go there to hang out. You get there to you know, have a few drinks then you went to your next location. So yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that was, yeah. Time. Uh, yeah. So university was great, but yeah, we went to Phil's and Morty's and all the, there were all kinds of different pubs and that's uh, out yeah. to the bomber, out to the uh, turret and yeah. Lots of good times at university. Actually, we went, um, actually last summer, around the time, around uh, our 15th anniversary. Why are we out there? Oh, the kids. We had taken them all to uh, Camp Brebeuf, which is just north of Waterloo, for okay. a summer camp. And uh, and then we stayed, spent a night in Waterloo, and we went back to the plantation where we met, and we saw all the stuff they've been doing downtown Waterloo. To it's improve. amazing. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, they saw the, the uh, LRT transit, or kind of like the streetcar transit they have downtown, and just walked around the campus and you know some of it's exactly the same some of it's totally different but yeah. uh but it's well and then the crazy part with my daughter turning uh 14 uh in june then yeah she's only four years away from going to school yeah it's crazy that is, is not crazy now um as a parent are you are you trying to get her to go any kind of specific direction whether it's law uh, medical accounting uh, at this point, it's just trying to like in grade eight. It's kind of hard. Like, it's you know, the class. By the way, uh, it just shows the uh, pressure I got from my Asian parents to become a doctor. <laughs> <learner again. laughs> Those are my first three examples. But um, <laughs> yes, sorry, go on, please. Oh yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, no, not really. We just want them to be successful. Like they've, um, like she excels in school. She does really well. She's a great student. She's near the top of her class, if not the top of the class. So, you know, proud parent. Yeah. And um, so she's doing really, really well. Gets a lot of great feedback from, from the teachers. So I know she'll do well. We're just trying to create those strong habits so she can be successful in high school. And really, it's just about going away. Like we assume like she's on the academic track. So that's where I assume we're going to university. We've been saving for 14 years for university. university. Yeah. Um, so that's the nice thing. That's another thing about kid. I'm having to save up for all three of them every month. Since right. they were, um, Cause school is so expensive, but, um, but yeah, no, just, you know, just want them to be successful and pick something. One, of course she wants to be a vet. Oh, nice. Which is um, about 10 times harder to get in than a doctor school because oh, <laughs> there's only one in oh, okay. like the whole country um so it is ex exceptionally difficult but if you, that's what your heart set on where where on is that. it based um, i believe it's guelph okay that's nice and uh yeah there might be another one out west but i mean it's just the one in ontario and it's really difficult because it's you know they think of kids they like pets like i, sh I should have brought in a uh, example of the thing between uh gizmo and um the fish and the guinea pigs and oh yeah the frogs are gone but yeah it's a lot oh, of now it's just but now we got snails because we had to replace the frogs of course you had so to <laughs> i didn't know that snails were a thing and i believe natalie there's some moss and there's some moss as well let's see this this is a really unique uh, i had no idea about this stuff yeah and, so uh, uh, sorry gizmo um was not a uh, gremlin i assume gizmo was a dog no no no, no. He's, he's he's our dog yeah he was okay, the first yeah. thing so yeah, so you know, I was there was another good story there. I was um, I was consulted about the kids really young and do we is it time to get a dog or something like that? And you're like, well, I think it's a little too early to get a dog. And then right. I was working in North Carolina at the time for for Lowe's to do on um, the team to bring them into Canada. And uh, and then one weekend I was away, my my wife said, well, you know, we we found this pup the kids would really like to see. So when I got back that weekend, we went and did a trial run with Gizmo. And uh, 10 years later, he still we lived with we us. We didn't give him back. We, we, kept <laughs> we didn't give him back. And I got to say, he's a great dog. But I guess even dogs get old and ornery, too, because he's, what, 10 or 11? Which is like, what, no, 77? 11 this year, 12. It's yeah. So I'm like, seven, right? Yeah. 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 I, although small dogs, it doesn't multiply as high because okay. they live longer. So I think it's, so I think he's in like his fifties. Now, uh, um, did you guys name them Gizmo or did your? Yes, yes. Okay. Because of the yeah. movie Gremlins, presumably? Yeah, because he kind of looked like a Gizmo. Like a Mowgli at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah Mowgli, yeah, yeah. So it's, uh, and then, yeah, so any of the younger viewers are like, what's a Gremlin? But it's, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we lost them over the Waterloo talk, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Better not bring any Seinfeld references in either. Uh, like Tito did, actually. Oh, did he? <laughs> Tito went hard on Seinfeld. <laughs> really dated himself. 
Oh, that's hilarious. But yeah, so we got the pets and there's, there's been always a lot of pets and we had, we've had pet rats. We've had, uh, and then we were really creative with the, the rats. They were Bucky. And then we got three or four other ones and it was Bucky two, Bucky three and Bucky four. Oh, it's easy. But <laughs> it's like George Foreman and his sons. I think he just got a new name, George Foreman, right? <laughs> George, George Foreman. <laughs> so yeah, we got lots of pets, lots of, uh, lots of adventure going on here all the time. That's awesome. Now, yeah. um, what has, um, what have you and the family been doing during quarantine? So how have you guys been managing? Well, it's, it's, it's just trying to stick to the structured routine that we have. Right. Um, you know, my first week I was like, uh, no, we don't need a, a structure. And then my wife knowing better is like, no, the kids are going to respond better to structure. So we have uh, a schedule up in the kitchen and we had it up in the bathroom upstairs. And it's funny that the, the scheduler person that's really strict to it is, is my youngest who oh, nice. is, uh, it's like, all right, it's 1130. It's physical activity time. Why is nobody else coming outside? Which is great. And uh, it's it's been really it's been really good. Oh, she heard her name. I heard a comment back there. Oh, this and um, we'll visit yet. We'll get a visit eventually. Yeah, sure. yeah, we'll get a visit. <laughs> and um, so yeah, it's been great. And well, big lifesavers is we have uh, uh, we're fortunate we have a nice big backyard backs onto the forest near the school, and we have a big trampoline. And nice. uh, so yeah, we've been using the trampoline daily. <laughs> Was a little run, impromptu wrestling matches? Yeah, something like that. There's, uh, they get along most of the time, but not all the time. So. <laughs> I mean, like, I, yeah, I, I grew up in a family of four, including myself. Uh, the oldest oh, one okay. was um, nine years older than me. And then my other oh, sister wow. was two years older than me. And then my brother was eight years younger than me. So there's a bit of a oh, gap. Oh, that's a big range. Big and gap. just like the two, my sister and I, who were two years apart, uh, we never got along. Like we hated each other. <laughs> like even to this day, we're adults. Like we have our own respective families, but I feel like we're still secretly complete competing with each other and so um yeah it is i i i just hope siblings I, it's probably an argument for me not to have another kid is because i grew up not necessarily i mean like i love my sister obviously but we always fought so this idea of like oh have a second kid so they can play with finn i'm like yeah. you can always go the other way though where you they just hate each other and then just makes each other's lives miserable i think a pair well the di there's the difference you had four so you could always pair off with somebody else or which is what i did with my little brother yeah. So whereas if with just the one, well, there's no wrong answer. It's a personal True. choice. It's, it's, but, it's exactly. But it's, um, but the good thing about having two, like I look at my, like we have three, uh, both my brothers have two. Uh, my sister-in-law is Natalie's family. She's got three sisters. Um, one has uh, five, one has three, what? and one is having the first. Okay. Uh, in, in May, it's had to go odd. Later this month. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So everyone's odd. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, uh, but on my brothers, uh, the one has two boys and one has two girls. So we're the only one that has one of each, uh, a couple of each or one of each. And, uh, but yeah, they get along really well. Both the girls, they get along really well. Both the boys, they get along really well. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's the odd number that makes it a little challenging, I think, sometimes. There's three's a crowd, as they say sometimes. And I came <laughs> from, I had two brothers, so it was often, you know, you're pairing off for one another. But I was the oldest, so. And we're, okay. my wife and I are both the oldest, so it was... And where did Chris, did you grow up in Whippy your whole life? Or yeah, you... yeah. Well, we moved here in 79, so I guess 41 years now. Um, lived in Toronto. My parents, my dad worked in the city. He still works at IBM. Okay. He's, uh, in Markham or? Yeah, yeah. 3,600 yeah. steals, although they're all working from home now. Of course. But yeah, he is, it's crazy. He's worked there for like 43 years. Oh my God. So it's, uh, he's still working. Actually, my mom retired yesterday. Oh, congratulations. So it's, um, it was her last day yesterday and we had a, a celebratory zoom meeting with, uh, with the girl, the uh, seven grandkids and, uh, and a few, uh, quarantinis. And where did your mom work? And, uh, she was a receptionist for some physicians downtown Whitby at the, okay. uh, the Dundas Whitby medical center. Like when I was in high school, I did filing for the doctors. Like it's right. hilarious. And uh, a couple of them re retired. She was thought she was going to retire three years ago. A couple of doctors retired, but the ones that bought their practice uh, kept her on. So she stayed another three years. And then, so she turned 65 in, uh, in March and retired, uh, I guess, April 30th. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So she's looking forward to that different change. The challenge is, it would, you know, part of the hope is we'd see each other more or spend more time at the cottage, but their current know, plan is, is just to spend yeah. some more time at the cottage. <laughs> or just virtually see each other for now because this, uh, this yeah. is our reality, right? It, it is. It is. And it's, it's, it's so difficult. Like it's, we're our social, such social pieces like you yourself, I'm sure. And myself, like we're out most days or nights to the week, meeting people, talking to people, yeah. speaking to residents, reaching out to people, talking to neighbors. And it is, it's such a struggle, but at the same time, I still don't feel that I'm not connected because here we're chatting here. Yeah, exactly. We're, I'm chatting with lots of people like zoom meetings. My wife 
if zooming with their sisters, their all kinds I of I think I made things. this like, point like a few episodes ago of just like video technology is not new. I mean, it's been probably commonplace. Mm-hmm. It's been like, you know, with broadband internet, let's say 20, 2008, we had yeah. we to do video conferencing. But I yeah. feel it took this pandemic to just re- us to realize the importance of using this technology to stay in touch mm-hmm. with people. And I think going forward, like I don't see myself like just calling people anymore. I think I'm going to arrange a call. I'd rather, if they can, arrange a video call because I think it is more personal this way. Like I like seeing the person. Yeah. Like I, well, I hate talking on the phone. It's, I, I, anytime I call anybody, whether it's family or even my wife, I'm always assuming that I'm calling them at the worst time possible and they're just rolling their eyes at me. So I always try and speak very quickly and get it done out of the way. But this way I get to, you know, you can set the time. You can really take your time with this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and you get, and that's where the thing, like once, like personally, once I have two or three texts with a friend, I just start calling. Cause I yeah. just, and, and there's a few of my friends. I'm the only person that calls them because everybody else texts. And I'm like, no, I want to talk to you. I want to feel the, the intonation of what you're doing. And exactly with the, the video, you get the intonation. You can see if they're rolling their eyes. or It's just yeah. a much better way to communicate. It's like back, uh, when did it came out? What, 1990 and what, Total Recall? We had, they all had the video phones, right? Which is hilarious, which they thought we would be there now. Yes. But, uh, but we're kind of there. We're just, again, still people seem to text a lot because you're, to your point, you're not intruding. You're, you leave it and they reply whatever. We're also not in a world with that. There was that guy within the guy in Total Recall. <laughs> that's yeah, that, what, that's, that's the only thing I remember. But yeah, there's that guy that who's like mutated who was like the leader within his like belly. That is, oh, thankfully yeah. oh, we're not Quato. at that point yet. Yes, no, good call. Quato, no Quados. Yeah. <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> Chris, that was Total Recall. My man, this is what I'm talking about. What do you think is your favorite Schwarzenegger movie? Just out of curiosity. Stay- Oh, oh, there's so many good, like Total Recall is one of my favorites. I yeah. really do like it. Um, but Terminator, I think as for most people, like yeah. it's just, it's just too classic. But By I, the way, I, I rewatched love- T2 recently and it still yeah, yeah. stands up, whether it's the it effects, does. the story, like it was it a does. perfect action movie, I would still say. Yeah, it is. It's it's one of those like you know templates that is great to work on. And you know you watch the the then you know get into more of the geriatric things like the Expendables where they bring in like this huge cast. But you know it's still entertaining. Like yeah. I want to. I want. I love action movies. Uh, and I just I want to be entertained. I want to see some blow up and some destruction or some James Bond or whatever. I uh, I just enjoy, enjoy being entertained that way. It's uh, it's fun. And then uh, my wife and I sometimes will get more cerebral. We've been watching uh, Sherlock. Uh, so have oh, you ever phenomenal! Watched it with yeah, it's so not no wait the British one, not the American. Yeah, with one. no the British with one with Cumberbatch. The Cum- Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Yeah, so it's like you really have to pay attention because there's yeah. just so much going on in the plot and the characters and what they're saying and it, and they're 90 minutes. So it's kind of like a movie every and time. And then each of them are only like three, uh, three episodes per season. Yeah. Like, well, like, cause they're so long. Right. But it's, it's, I prefer that way. I find like there's no filler. They literally go straight to the point and like mm. your arc is three episodes. So you really got to tell the story properly. Did you finish yeah. all of Sir Sherlock yet? No, no, we're in the third season, I think. So we're, uh, okay. cause I guess the challenge is still between, between, between when the kids are settled and in bed and we can finally watch an episode it's it's tough because you know now he's been busy with work and it's hard to sit through one so it takes yeah. takes a while to sometimes get through a full one or to have the right night where uh where everybody's up and well uh, i'll and bring you back i want to hear i want to hear your thoughts about uh, sherlock because i love that show yeah. Uh, but I have certain qualms with it, which I won't mention until after you finish. So finish. Oh, okay, fair enough. And we'll we'll chat about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, love it. Absolutely. There's there's so much, there's so many great TVs. Like it's all sad when Game of Thrones ended, but uh, uh, I don't I know. I was done with it. There. I was. I mean, like I was. I'm looking back, back oh, at you? Facebook posts I made a year ago because they're popping up in my memories, and it showed how excited I was for the last season yeah, yeah. of Game of Thrones. But I think, like, if you look back, like objectively those last few seasons were rough. Like they weren't good. Seasons. They weren't as good as the beginning. <clears throat> you know, no, and I think, weren't. you know, as everyone says, they ran out of source material. So they're kind of making it up as they go along, which is fine. But I just think um, <clears throat> the quality drop off was pretty significant. And um, mm-hmm. I think to a degree, I was just watching it just to see how it was going to end. And then once it ended, yeah. I was like, no, really? That's it. Okay. Yeah, they they seem to wrap up a ton of story arcs. We're just like the story arc they're working on for years, and I was like, oh, not twenty minutes is done. I was like, oh. right. And I felt <laughs> so like that I, last I, I, season, they really could have like focused in on certain aspects, but it's like, no, Arya kills Ice King, done. 
yeah, I, yeah, I, the I three-eyed agree. ravens, was... your new uh, Lord of Winterfell. Okay, great. Like I don't know. I was yeah. like, Bruce. yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was, it was an interesting. And I guess that's the thing. I didn't. I once it was coming towards the end. That's when I really got into it. Oh, I see. And okay. I, I watched the whole thing at once. So it was just and, one. Uh, Marathon yeah, so it was one big thing. So to right. me, it was a bit easier that way because sure. I, I didn't have to forget anything. You were always in the waiting. moment. I was always in it. So it just and then, it, but it did weaken out at the end. Well, I think yeah. it's the problem with any good TV show. I don't think there's yeah. any good TV shows that end well or satisfactorily. At least I think Mad Men I was pretty happy yeah. with, and that was yeah. And Big Breaking Bad was obviously phenomenal as well. But yeah. oh yeah, Breaking Bad was great. Are you watching Better Call Saul? Oh, that's Hall? too funny. I really didn't get into it i like uh the main actor and the like oh, what's his name bob um, odenkirk yeah yeah i just he's not strong enough for me to or motivated enough for me to watch the whole thing him as a side show in breaking bad great but him as the main event i watched a few episodes and i was like next i'm kind of shocked at what a good actor he is i mean he came from comedy which you don't get a lot of yeah good yeah, that's actors true. from comedy but um i would suggest going back to revisit just because it's like the best show okay so well fair enough fair enough there's me and steve uh, yamato we 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 steve and i bonded over better call Saul because oh, i didn't know he hilarious. watched it either yeah. yeah 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 oh that's hilarious but um but yeah no i haven't got into it but it's been uh it's been interesting that way and then there's been what and and then shifting chalk is back to i know you brought up uh my wife being a physician there but it's yeah been, it's been really interesting like when this first all started it um you know, it was really interesting because you got out these different calls and then you had that basically that emergency call from the chief of staff from uh, Lake Ridge Health basically reaching out to uh, to Natalie to send a message to all physicians in Durham. Mm-hmm. And there's a they're completely out of PPE. Yeah. So um, so they had reached out to the province. They weren't getting much traction. So they literally reached out to all the physicians in uh, in Durham and like my wife's clinic. Like they basically, except for, you know, 5% of their supply, they sent everything to the hospital. They got that outreach in the paper and they did everything. But, um, but yeah, that was, it was really telling at the beginning of it. Like we have no PPE and people are running out. And, um, and how that all has been shifting. Like we have a couple uh, physicians that live on our street and uh, but they're specialists so basically they they're at home they They can't do anything they have no work they right they're without there's no OR time there's no any of that stuff so they're just sitting at home and they've like having zero income and then at least uh but with natalie's uh as a family doctor at least they're still working but it's still way less like she's only really have enough to go in maybe two two and a half days a week because there's nobody's coming into the doctor the er's are empty right um it's been an interest it's a really been a really dynamic and different experience from the physician side and we literally have thousands of thousands of physicians in the problems province just sitting at home because the ors are closed and they can't do any uh surgeries it's interesting only because like again um no one really knows the next step or what the world's mm-hmm. gonna look like like even i think the region was talking about um how we're going to use office space going forward. And I remember asking the question, I was like, why don't we just let them work from home? Like, it just seems like a really natural thing. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, we'll have to look into it and study the long-term repercussions. But I think most companies now are realizing, hey, I think most people can work from home right now. (laughs) Like, I think if you're a company, you can just monitor your work staff remotely, you know, have them come in once a week if you need to. But I don't Mm -hmm. don't subscribe to the theory that everyone has to go to an office every single day because it would solve a lot of, traffic issues, uh, building maintenance issues. Like you can just reduce that. Just have people work from their home. And you can. And as someone that's, uh, you know, telecommuted and worked, I said, I've had a corporate career. I still do some uh, ERP consulting with my friend's firm um, one or two days a week. And, uh, it, and that's, those are all true statements. Right. But I'm telling you, nothing replaces being in the office with your collaborative team working on your projects. Like you are way more productive and you'll get more done than when you're at home. So even when you have all that software and you can monitor different people and you track their key strokes and productivity, yeah. that's all fine. But, you know, the home and the office, like two different things. So I, I don't know. I, well, it's, you can, and having the flexibility to do it when it, when it works, because if you can have a, an employee that's at home and has an appointment or stuff with their kids or whatever, or uh, caring for an elderly 
parent or whatever, great to have the flexibility, but I'm telling you, you're more productive and you get more work done and you have better team bonding and more things when you're in the office. So I'm still a big no, I, I, Yeah, that's, no, that's absolutely office. true. I think I am definitely more productive, but I'm just thinking of every Durham resident who commutes to Toronto and like, mm -hmm. let's get up at like 5 a.m. To, to get to work for nine. Like that's a four hour mm -hmm. window and you have to get the kids ready and everything, but it just, it just seems asinine to me that we're not doing this more when this is showing that there's an opportunity to at least maybe reduce the number of hours in the office, reduce yeah. like your day to day doesn't necessarily have to be spent at the office. I find no question, but I guess that's, but we all, but as individuals, we all make that trade off. Like True. I have always known, like when my parents chose to move to Whitby in 79, because the house in Whitby was, you know, it was only 80 grand and the house in the Danforth was like 110 grand, which was too expensive, right? Which, you know, hilarious years later, that house in the Danforth is <laughs> worth would two and a half million. Liver to pay <laughs> that house in Whitby is still house. only worth half a million. Yeah. So you're, you're definitely better off. And even my friends, when I worked at K Entire Head Office there, they stretched and they stretched and they got a house in the Danforth. We're just going to save 100 grand and buy a house in Whitby. Well, they, uh, they definitely, uh, they won the real estate lottery that those decisions, but, um, but yeah, but we actively chose like I, my wife grew up in suburbs in Orleans. I grew up in suburbs here in Whitby. I didn't, I don't want, and I, we lived downtown briefly. Um, mm -hmm. and Allie was doing a residency at Sunnybrook and I was working at Young and Eglinton at Canadian Tire Head Office. Like it was great. I was a block from work. Right. We would, uh, at lunch breaks, we'd come over and we'd play some cards, um, with a bunch of buddies just because it was across the street. Yeah, so close. Yeah. And, and there's a lot, and it was great, tons of restaurants, lots of culture. It was great activity, but we growing up in the suburbs didn't want to have that experience for our kids being in town. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, we prefer, I have a nice big yard. I got big space. I'm in the, by the forest. I, I got lots of activities. It's a very kid friendly town. We have all these events. So it's, we, I made that choice years ago. So I was commuting. It was, it was never an issue. I know what it's all about. I've been doing it 20 years. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. That's just the trade-off you make. I, I choose to commute so that I can have a nicer home for my family and give them the more the traditional experience in Whitby that I experienced. So it's, it's just my guilt talking because like for the most part, I didn't, I've been driving all my life. Like I've, I was an area manager for Rogers and then a district manager for Microsoft and then in politics for Mark Holland's office. So for the most part, I, I never minded driving. I actually enjoy commuting because it's my time in the car and it's kind of like me time. Yeah. And then, you know, when I moved my family to Ajax, I kind of forced my wife to commute for like <laughs> to the horrible commute every day now. And it's just Fair my job talking right now. So honey, if you're watching, which you probably are not, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, I hope you enjoy the house we have now. Yeah, well, it, that's part of it, right? And, that, and that's the thing. It's if two people commute, not a good choice. But if just one person commutes, yeah, because now like she can have her office anywhere and she's, she's the five minute drive to work. So Right. Well, yeah, makes, Chris, makes I mean, we've barely scratched the surface and our time's up. This flew by. So this absolutely flew <laughs> by. Um, now, before well, we you didn't go, even jump on the trampoline. I know, uh, were you going to video you jumping on the trampoline? Because <laughs> I can wait for that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, before, we, before we go, is there any um, small business or nonprofit you want to plug? And we'll post the, um, the links yeah. on, our, on the video. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, I guess one of the things that we're trying to do at the town is, uh, you know, help all the different food banks. So, you yeah. know, a lot of uh, local churches and parishes have uh, food banks, like, you know, St. Vincent de Paul, whether at St. John's or different parishes or our um, Salvation Army is what we're doing. So the town actually right now is uh, at all the fire halls, except Fire Hall 2 at uh, Dixon and Manning, is, uh, has a thing for food banks. So there's, there's a bin uh, for the Salvation Army at all the Why fire is Fire halls. Hall 2 being difficult? Uh, because there is, they're doing renos. Oh, okay. That's, that's a fair reason. There, there's, yeah. So they're, they're doing some work there. So far and, and there's, it's not fully staffed. So that was the one that's, uh, that's no, normally yeah, that's it fair. is. And, um, so yeah, so no, it's all the other fire halls in town. So yeah, if you can you get the opportunity, please, when you're out there and you're in your long lineup at the superstore, no frills and your long lineup to get in your long lineup to pay. Yeah. Uh, if you can pick up some, uh, some non perishables or uh, the food banks, non perishables, they are really, they're really, there's a huge need there. Yeah. There really is with so many people lost their jobs, even though there's the government benefits, it's not the same. So whatever you can offer would be, uh, would be greatly appreciated. Fantastic. And where can people find you on social media? 
Oh, for me, oh, it's just, uh, you know, you can find me on Twitter, you know, at Chris Leahy. That's the nice mm -hmm. thing about signing up on Twitter, like, you know, 15 years yeah, ago, it's actually ones. your name. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on Facebook, Chris Leahy Counselor. And, uh, and then, yeah, email anytime at the town, you know, leahyc at whippy.ca. Always, sure. uh, always happy to help and chat. Uh, you don't have a TikTok? Um, I have a TikTok, but I, <laughs> I don't use it so much because the... So I can't remember the handle right. and then Instagram, I think is the same Chris, Chris Lee counselor. So yeah, I, I just haven't got into the no, TikTok as much. My kids are, but I just to do a few second video to try and get a message out. I don't know. I still haven't, uh, I still haven't mastered that. How about you? Uh, I've barely mastered Facebook, let alone YouTube <laughs> right now. This is, this is very much a trial in progress. So no, I mean, like I, I see, I see all the clips on Reddit and you know, they're fine. I miss Vine. I remember when Vine was kind of the go-to mm. like video platform for these kind of short clips, but um, yeah. you know, when people do it well, it's amazing. But I think I for the majority, it's kind of just like, no one wants to set up like an hour to do like a three second video right but like the best ones you can see all the setup you can see all the kind of things going on behind it so we'll, we'll get there eventually yeah. when i have to absolutely make sure my son isn't making a fool of himself uh online <laughs> and, and there's and you have so much concern for the kids like my kids are right at that age you know 13 14 going grade nine and i'm just they're spending time on tiktok and i look at that it's just trying to give them that that balance between freedom but just also monitoring what they're doing so they're not doing too much you know it's 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 a pull push and pull for sure oh it's frightening for me like just <laughs> i i you know like i don't want to you know i don't i'm no i don't believe in scaremongering and just like you know no. just reading like the odd story of my kid's gonna get kidnapped right but yeah, just like the, the online stuff especially like i don't know how like at what age do you give a kid an email address that seems like a weird concept to you. did you decide with it, your wife like oh when they're nine that's the age for email well, I guess here's the thing. When I signed up for all their devices, I just created email addresses. Mm -hmm. um, so they all have it, but I haven't really told them that they have it. Oh, so they just are logged in and oh. just that's what they have. Yeah, and I set up so they can FaceTime with their buddies. Um, and then, well, if they all have I iOS and then or WhatsApp for the ones that didn't. And then, uh, and then even on the WhatsApp, you know, I just got a, uh, what do you call it, number? I paid for for a number because I've refused to pay for a data plan for a kid right. and uh, set up those different things. So it's just as long as they can communicate. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we've met that threshold and then we just take it one step at a time. Like they all, they like playing Fortnite. You're be a few years ahead of the Fortnite experience. That's its own. Uh, I've decided I'm not letting my kid play any video games. Like I'm going to make him work up by generation. So I'm going to start with like <laughs> Nintendo and if he can beat Mario, yeah. then he'll work up to the Super Nintendo and then like work up that way. But he's not starting at the best. Like he's going to have to pay his dues like his dad did back in the day. Yeah. And that's, and that's a great thing. That's a great thought. Um, having three kids and going through that, your mind may change in the next uh, 10 years, but we can revisit that 10 years from now. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I'll, okay, Google, remind me in 2030, on May 1st, to see where I am with the video games. Um, yeah, that's right. I think that'll be an election. That'll be a registration for an election, the 2030 election. Too. Oh, sorry. My Google actually just said that wrong. <laughs> That is hilarious. I didn't mean it. Okay. That is hilarious. Well, hey, I'll, I'll, call, I'll call you in 10 years. Um, Chris, Even better. thank you so much for joining us. This was a ton of fun. We will yeah, do it again. It was a pleasure. We'll get you back. We'll Absolutely. talk about more parenting and you and Natalie and the family and checking on you. So thanks so much. <laughs> it's a, um, thanks so much, Sterling. Absolutely. For everyone else, uh, you can find me at Your Voice for Ajax, number four for the four. And um, yeah, please like, subscribe, and comment if you have um, any questions for us. Um, and Chris, this will probably go out uh, probably a week or change from now. I have a few backlogs, so no we'll get it out. No worries. Anytime, man. Great. Uh, thanks for everyone Pleasure. for watching. Take care.